Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the brilliant books that I read in September. I really felt like I got my sort of reading groove back in September and I managed to finish quite a few books which I'm really excited to share with you. It's a grey, rainy, cold day here in Yorkshire today so just the right time to get cosy with a good book. So here are the books that I read and my recommendations. Now obviously in September my mum and I did our first Tea and Tattle book club and we did it on The Fortnight in September by R.C. Sheriff. So I'll put a link in the description box underneath to our chat about this book but this is such a wonderful read especially for the month of September. So do watch our book club if you'd like to hear more about the book but I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful read and one I like to return to almost every September. And then because we were doing the book club on that book, I also reread Green Gates by R.C. Sheriff, which I hadn't read for years, but I really enjoyed coming back to this book. In some ways, it almost feels like a sequel to The Fortnight in September, in that even though it's about very different characters, the characters in this book remind me a bit of the sorts of people that R.C. Sheriff wrote about in The Fortnight in September. This is about an elderly couple, the husband has just retired and he starts to drive his wife a little bit mad in their house in London. And they really start to worry about the future together, how to both find a routine that will give them happiness at this stage in their life. And in the end, what they decide to do is to move outside of London to what would be now sort of Greater London, and they buy their house, a lovely brand new house with modern conveniences in a beautiful part of the countryside. And this is, again, just such a sort of life-affirming read. I really loved it. And I think R.C. Sheriff writes so well about themes surrounding a aging and also loneliness and the importance of finding your vocation in life and also in finding like-minded people and getting involved in things that keep you active and happy and all of that comes into this book and again it's just a really charming gentle read so I really enjoyed returning to this in September too. And then I read The Hopkins Manuscript, also by R.C. Sheriff, and as you can see, these have all been published by the fabulous Persephone Books, uh, which is an independent publishing company that republishes forgotten classics. And I admit that for years I hadn't picked up this book, even though I worked at Persephone Books for a while um, when I was younger, but because this is a sci-fi novel, and I confess that I don't read a lot of sci-fi fiction, that's just generally a genre that I don't tend to pick up. However, I absolutely adored this book. I mean, it's it was one of the favourite books I read in September. It went straight to the top of my list. And I was just really amazed by how much I enjoyed it. It's a bit of a strange premise in that it's about the catastrophe that occurs when the moon lands on the earth. And the first half of the novel is about the build up to this event happening and it not being known whether the earth will just be completely destroyed or what exactly will happen. So this novel really deals with um, the sort of how people respond to a possible catastrophe, how the ordinary man responds to it. And the character in this book is a very ordinary man. He's also quite a lonely man. He lives alone um, in a house in the English countryside. Again, these themes of loneliness, aging, and the importance of true friendship crops up in this book as well. 
And these are themes that Sharif explores so well. And in this book, there's just this added poignancy to it, because in some ways, the main character isn't necessarily particularly likable, especially at the start of the book. He's quite a petty person in some ways. He also loves to bore people endlessly about his chickens. He <laughs> really prides himself on rearing excellent chickens and he takes them to prize shows and they're essentially his reason for living. But you realise there's not very much going on in this man's life and he's actually deeply lonely. And although he, although he thinks of himself as being uh, wonderful in a crowd and able to make friends very easily. In fact, that isn't true at all. However, his courage is tested um, in the event of this catastrophe and he actually does come into his own when the awful event occurs and far from his life being over, he actually finds a whole new lease of life he makes wonderful friends, he realises that he does have these inner depths of resilience and courage that he never really knew that he had and he becomes a much more likeable person through the book. Now what I find incredibly poignant about this story is R.C. Sheriff lived through World War One. he went to war, he was an army officer, he wrote a wonderful play called Journey's End about that experience. This book was written in 1939, just as the outbreak of World War II was happening. And what's so sad about this book is that it is not in fact the sort of natural disaster that spells the end to humanity but it is in fact people themselves and this book sort of deals with that. So there's so much to love about this, there's so much life-affirming joy in this book. There's also great trage tragedy and sadness to it as well and I won't give away the ending but I would say read it even if you're not a fan of sci-fi. I highly recommend this. It really is just a book about the human condition in the end and I was really amazed by how much I loved it. This is definitely a book I'll be rereading, I'm sure, because I think there's a lot you can get from it with further reads. So really enjoyed that. I listened to quite a few audiobooks this month. I always have an audiobook on the go, but two books I especially wanted to listen to with the start of autumn was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I've read the physical copy of this book many times, but I'd never actually listened to it before. So this month I used my Audible credit to get Jane Eyre read by Sandy Newton, and it's an amazing reading. She does an incredible job, and I so enjoyed listening to it. This is such a great classic to read in the autumn and as always I just seem to discover something new with every reread of Jane Eyre. I mean I think that's what marks a truly wonderful book, a real classic, is when you can get different interpretations and just more added depth to the novel on every reread and that always happens to me with Jane Eyre. So it's always a pleasure to return to this book too and I really enjoyed that audiobooks edition. I would really recommend it and I'll link to it in the show notes. And then another book that I listened to, I already had this on Audible, but that's September by Rosamond Pilcher. Again, I've read this book before, but I wanted to just listen to it this month. It's a lovely book to come back to every September. If you're a fan of The Shell Seekers by Rosamond Pilcher, but you've never read this one, then I definitely recommend reading it because one of the characters from The Shell Seekers makes a reappearance in this book. 
A lot of it is set in Scotland, which I love. I've only ever been to Edinburgh and Glasgow and I just so want to explore the Highlands in Scotland sometime, but in the meantime, I'm just being an armchair traveller and I love reading books that are set in the Scottish countryside in the Highlands. There's just so much romance somehow to that scenery. So I love reading books that are set in Scotland. And again, this is a lovely, cosy sort of read, although there is sadness in this book too. But it's a lovely read to curl up with in the autumn months. And then I'd been really looking forward to the publication of this book, which is Dear Reader, The Comfort and Joy of Books, A Love Letter to Stories by Cathy Rensenbrink. I think this is the only non-fiction book that I read this month. It's a memoir and it's a book about books and I love books about books. And Cathy Ransom Brink is a writer herself and in this book she charts her life as an avid reader, a book lover and also about how she became a writer. And it was really interesting because not only does Cathy describe many of the books that made her a lifelong reader, that she, the books that she loves the most and that she's turned to throughout her life for solace, for comfort, for happiness. And not only does she do that, but she also describes her career within books which I found really interesting. And she first got a job within the book industry by working for Waterstones in Harrods. I worked at Harrods myself as a young woman when I was an undergraduate in London, and I thought Cathy got it spot on. <laughs> it was really interesting to hear about how she had to deal with the sort of clients that shop in Harrods often and it brought it all back for me in the separate staff entrance and all of that and I actually worked in the sort of ball gown like the evening wear department so sadly not in books but it was just really fun reading her experiences of being in Harrods and sort of comparing them to my own. Then she went on to, walk, to work for Waterstones in Oxford Street and lots of different branches around London. And as a former Londoner, I just found that really interesting too. But then she also speaks about how she ended up getting the courage to actually write herself. And a lot of this book does also go into the great tragedy of her life, which was that her beloved brother had an accident. He was hit by a car as a young man and subsequently died eight years later. So she also touches on how that awful event affected her life, how she best learnt to not, over, not overcome her grief, but live with her grief. And it's a very moving book for that reason. And she writes a little bit about how the memoir that she ended up writing about that grief and how she dealt with it and about the loss of her brother. Um, that was a book that she had to write and that was the book that got her into writing. But she also writes a lot about how books have saved her life many times. They've been real companions to her at very difficult stages in her life. She mentions lots of my favourite authors in this and as someone who turns to books myself at difficult times in my life and you know I've just always been a huge reader. There was so much that I could empathise with in this book. I absolutely loved it and I'd really recommend it for any bibliophile. Now, another real pleasure from having read Dear Reader was that it inspired me to read another book and want to read several other books. And that was such a joy of the book that not only did I enjoy Dear Reader in itself, but it made me want to pick up other books. And one of those books was Not That Sort of Girl by Mary Wesley. Now, I'm a huge Mary Wesley fan. I adore the chamomile lawn, but I'd never read 
not that sort of girl and Kathy really raves about this book in Dear Reader so she made me very curious to read it so as soon as I finished Dear Reader I picked up Not That Sort of Girl and I'm so glad I did I absolutely loved it it's about a young woman called Rose and she meets both her future husband and the love of her life at a tennis party on Boxing Day it is an indoor tennis party now, the love of her life and, the, and her husband are not the same men. And so this book is largely about Rose as an older woman, having recently become widowed, looking back on her life, considering the decisions she made. So it's a bit of a sort of time shift novel in that you get some of it set in the present day and some of it is set in the past. It's also a book very much about World War II and how Rose copes with the outbreak of war and her fears both for her husband and her lover and also her difficulties in running a big house in the countryside in wartime. Mary Wesley is such a sensual writer. There are just some amazing lines in this book. There's one line I remember where Rose's lover talks to her and she describes it she describes his voice as being like honey so old it's gone gritty and I just think that's such an amazing description I mean Mary Wesley is just such a fabulous writer I think she really wrote about what she knew too a lot of this book was inspired by her own life and I think that's part of what makes this just feel so real and I love her writing because she often features characters that aren't particularly likeable there's a brother and sister in this book of a very odd relationship and they're not very likeable people and yet they're such real characters and I love the way that Mary Wesley does that just every single character really comes to life on the page with her and that's something I so enjoy about her writing but I highly recommend this if you if you haven't read much Mary Wesley then I I would say do please and also not that sort of girl is brilliant I don't know why it's not as well known as the chamomile lawn because I think it's really fantastic and then my mum and I have a little book club that we do just with our neighbour and for our September read our neighbour suggested that we all read The Friend by Sigrid Nanez. I really enjoyed this, I wasn't sure what to expect but I did enjoy this book a lot, I think that Nunez is such a great writer and although this is a book on quite a difficult subject, it's about a friend who's left reeling when her, it's about a woman who's left reeling when her best friend dies, he commits suicide and he leaves her his dog to take care of which is this enormous Great Dane and she's in danger of losing her New York apartment because she isn't really meant to have dogs and this is not a dog that you can easily hide. So this is a book that's very much about grief it's also about a lot of other things. One of the most interesting aspects of the book I found was that Nanez writes a lot about the life of a writer, what that really entails. She also writes on the craft of writing. The character in this book is a professor of creative writing at university. So it's also a bit about how you teach writing, what students expect from their teachers and I really enjoyed when she did go sort of off tangent into these sorts of subjects and although like I said it does deal with quite difficult material I found it a real page turner I don't really know why but I, I read this very quickly pretty much in a single sitting and I really wanted to keep reading to keep finding out what happens to the dog what happens to the woman who's a nameless narrator and I think Nunez has put 
a lot of her own experiences into this book. She has said in an interview that this is partly autobiographical, which I found interesting. And I think that's the one thing in a way that I struggled with a bit here. This is very much written like it's a memoir, and yet it is a novel. And sometimes that's a sort of blending of genre that I struggle with a little bit. So I'd rather something were either a memoir or a novel. <laughs> and it's not very straightforward in that way. I think the lines are really blurred with this book. But on the other hand, once you kind of come to accept that, then I think there's just so much to enjoy and so much has stuck with me since finishing the book. So I did really enjoy it and so did my mum and our neighbour, which was great. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading Nunez's new book, which has just come out too. And I think it also explores similar themes on grief and ageing and death. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, being able to write in a real, really page-turning style about those sorts of subjects and with such sort of eloquence and beauty is a very rare talent, I think. So I really admire that. This next book was also one of my very favourite reads of September, and that's Passing by Nella Larson been wanting to read this book for ages but I especially wanted to read it now because I really want to read The Vanishing Half which is another book about a black woman passing for a white woman and I knew that there were many books on this subject within the canon of black literature but a real classic on that subject is Passing by Nella Larson. And before I read The Vanishing Half, I wanted to read this book um, to get more of a sense of the sort of literature on this subject. And I'm so glad I read this. It Again, it's a real page turner, very slight. I think I read this in an afternoon and I so enjoyed it. The beginning of the book is really atmospheric. It's set during a very hot day in Chicago. I think this was written in the 1920s or 1930s, the interwar years anyway. And a woman feels faint in the heat and she goes into a hotel. And there she meets an old childhood friend of hers. Now in this situation, both women are passing as white. They're both black women, but they're both passing as white women in this social context. And this book is really about the relationship that happens between these two women after they've bumped into each other, after years of being apart, and they've both gone very separate ways. Although both women can potentially pass for white, one woman has chosen not to, and she's very much stayed within the black community. She's moved to Harlem and married, has had a family. The other woman has chosen to pass as white, and she's very much left her family and her background behind. She's married a white man who is incredibly racist and who has no idea that she is in fact black. And Nella Larson just deals with this subject um, in such an interesting way. This is brilliantly written. I absolutely love her writing. And her descriptions of both these women is really fascinating. One is quite um, cold, almost inhibited and the other just wants to reach for everything that she can in life. And the tension really rises between these women and there's a really shocking ending, which really took me by surprise. And yeah, I, I won't give anything away, but 
this is a this really is such a great book i'm so glad i read it and i'm really looking forward to reading the vanishing half now um to see to see how the subjects of race and passing and identity and culture are dealt with in that book um because it's so interesting to have read this one first and yeah i really recommend it and then this book I actually just finished last night, and that's Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. And this was such a fun, life-affirming read. It's a book that's really about female friendship and a sense of adventure and not giving up on the things that you really want from life, whatever that may be. It's really a book about not giving up on your dream and how that's important especially for women who so often maybe don't put themselves or their ambitions first in life. So I absolutely love those themes and I loved reading this book. It's very funny. Um, the protagonist Mar Marjorie Benson one day has simply had enough. She's this downtrodden teacher. She's getting on for 50. And she suddenly has had enough and just walks out of her school <laughs> carrying a pair of stolen boots with her. This is set in the 1950s, so there's a lot about rationing and what post-war Britain is like. Um, it actually starts in September and goes through um, the autumn into Christmas and just after, but a lot of the book is set in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, because what Miss Benson decides to do when she walks out of her teaching job is to fulfill her lifelong ambition of trying to find the gold beetle of New Caledonia. She doesn't even know that this beetle exists, it's only rumoured to exist. But for many years she's wanted to find it and for various reasons she gave up on that dream. She hires an assistant to help her and through various twists of fate, her new assistant turns out to be a young woman called Enid Pretty, who seems like the worst assistant ever for the job, the most unlikely sort of person to get on with Marjorie and to be of any practical use in the field at all. She's a young woman who is very flirtatious, wears high heels, has dyed bright blonde hair and at first Miss Benson can't stand her but in fact there are real depths to Enid and both women come to rely on each other completely and this is just such a wonderful ode to female friendship. I love the book for that reason. Now I'm not completely happy about the ending and if you've read the book you'll know what I mean <laughs> and let me know what you thought of the ending because it actually upset me quite a bit I didn't really think it was necessary but I still enjoyed this book and I would still really recommend it and like I said it's just a sort of life-affirming story that I think women in particular would really enjoy and then I read this book, Moonflower Murders by Anthony Horowitz, which I've been really looking forward to. I love the first book in this series by him, which was called Magpie Murders. So I've been really excited for Moonflower Murders to come out. And I read it really quickly at the start of the month. This book sort of picks up where Magpie Murders left off. Susan, who's the now ex-publisher in this book, is in Greece managing a hotel with her boyfriend, but she's starting to think whether this is really the life that she wanted. She's missing England, she's missing her career in publishing, and she's starting to question her choices. So she jumps at the chance of going back to England when she's asked to investigate a former murder that happened at a hotel and a recent disappearance of a young woman. And these two events, the murder and the disappearance, seem to be connected. 
And why Susan is asked to investigate is because one of her previous authors, Alan Conway, who wrote mystery books, wrote a book that was largely based on the murder that happened in real life at this hotel. And Alan Conway is known for leaving clues in his books about real life murders. Now, he was <laughs> murdered himself in the Magpie Murders, so Susan can't ask him, but she reads his book again and she goes off to investigate and to see if she can find this um, woman who's disappeared. Now, I always really enjoy Anthony Horowitz's mysteries. I think he's so clever with them. He drops so many little clues. And I really enjoy looking out for those in his books. The structure is the same as the Magpie Murders in that there's a book within the book. You get Alan Conway's book within the Moonflower Murders. And it's quite fun because when you read Alan Conway's Book, you're looking for potential clues that he might have left to help you solve the murder alongside Susan. And I just enjoy that kind of murder mystery sort of puzzle aspect to, the, to his writing. So if you're into that sort of book, then I would really recommend this one. And yeah, it was just a really fun, light read. And then the last book that I read in September is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, another mystery. And I'd been really looking forward to this because I'd heard it was partly inspired by the Tuesday Club mysteries of Miss Marple. And those are Agatha Christie's short stories that are about Miss Marple and her group of elderly friends who sort of gather around a fireplace and they tell each other unsolved mysteries. And Miss Marple always manages to solve them. So that idea was used to inspire this book which is set in a retirement village and again it's about a group of elderly friends who gather together every Thursday and they try to solve cold cases and then a real murder happens within the retirement village and they band together to see if they can find the murderer. This is also a funny, light book, but I didn't love it as much as I thought that I would. I really didn't like the ending very much. Um, it matters to me with a mystery that I think that the solution is probable and also fairly guessable. I think that the writer should be very, very clever about the solution, but I think they should still leave enough clues that you could sort of get there yourself and I found this just too improbable I I yeah essentially I just didn't really like the ending and I didn't think it was a completely fair ending but it was still quite a fun light read and apparently there's a tv series I think that's going to be made of this and I think that that would actually be really fun so I'm looking forward to that one probably still tune in to that but anyway, those are all of the books that I read in September. I was really pleased to read quite a wide variety of titles. Let me know what you've read in September and if any of these titles appeal to you. I'd love to know. But do, this, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, which you can do by clicking my face that pops up. I think on this side, <laughs> I think somewhere around here. But yes, I'll be back again very soon with another video. Bye.